What's new at Charlie's? What's new at Charlie's? Still on main. What's new at Charlie's? Tell me what's new at Charlie's? Still on main. Hi, welcome to another edition of What's New at Charlie's. Well, this week we're rolling into St. Patty's Day, so um, my good friend, Mr. Don Williams, the Bourbon Fool. Don, I thought, well, better let's uh, let's do some Irish whiskey. It's, it's been it's been a while. It's been a while. We've done one before, but we don't do many Irish whiskeys. We're kind of bourbon guys, um, but I thought, you know, we're we're rolling up on St. Patty's Day. Let's do some Irish whiskey. What do you think? I think it's a great idea. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, researching these, I went and opened some Irish whiskey, so yeah. I already got myself. So you got uh, started, huh? I yeah. Did. Ah, awesome. I did. So, so Don, what makes an Irish whiskey an Irish whiskey? Well, I wanted to just briefly talk about the four major whiskeys, and each one, each government has standards. Each country has standards. So everyone knows in America, bourbon is grain, yeast, water, that's it. There's no additives, that's what goes into it. Now you can mature it later in a secondary barrel, but as far as the actual makeup, there's no additives. In Ireland and Scotland, so for Irish whiskey and scotch, both of them are allowed to add artificial color. And a big part of that is because they don't have the seasonal changes, Right. Their whiskey does not work in and out of the barrels too much, so that's why they can add caramel coloring. Now, the fourth one, which to me is truly in fourth place, is Canadian whiskey because they are the only ones allowed to not only put artificial color in, but they can put in artificial flavor. And to me, that's a big you know, downer. Uh, so this one, what's significant about that story is this distillery chooses not to add artificial color even though they could. Good for them. Right. So it's Do it really, the right way. really a, a traditional type Irish whiskey. Nice. Very cool. So, um, but now I know in Scotland they can use barrels over and over and over again. Is it the same in Ireland? Well, <coughs> for the pot still, the pot still is very unique. Both of these are originally aged in X bourbon barrels, meaning so, used bourbon used barrels. Used barrels, yeah. But the pot still is then secondary aged in Irish oak, and it is the first time I've ever heard of anyone using Irish oak. They harvest the trees in Ireland, send them to Spain to be made into barrels, and then they're brought back. And supposedly the Irish oak gives it kind of a heavy uh, flavoring and I'm anxious to try it. Yeah, me too. I've never heard of an Irish oak. There's a cool little tag here on the bottle that says, and the, so this bottle is actually from tree 8A. So you can actually trace the tree and the heritage of your bottle or, or your cooperage. Um, didn't work so good for us, and we tried, and it crashed my phone, so I'm just going to give you that warning before you go on to the thing. Uh, but you can go look it up, and there's supposed to be a movie that goes with it, but... Um, Use at your own risk. I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> so it's 86 proof. Yep. Um, We're going to do that one first. Let me go ahead and crack it while you finish talking about it here. So. Yeah. And uh, the other thing is it's different that they use kind of a heavily, uh, they use a lot of unmalted barley uh -huh. along with malted barley. So it's kind of a combination. So they call it kind of a heavy mash. Okay. Um, and I can, I can actually smell that from here. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. I really can. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can definitely smell the, the so smell the malt. Yeah. Wow, there is a lot of flavor there. Yeah, there is. So it's sweet. Yeah. Um, it's sweeter than I anticipated. It has a 
that earthy, earthy flavor that you get from so many Irish whiskeys or scotches. Yeah. It does have a hint of molasses, although not real heavy. The you don't get any. I don't get any smokiness from it. No. Mm -mm. But to me, it it almost reminds me of of a scotch, a scotch flavor without the really bad scotch aftertaste or the peat. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's from the malt, but. So again. The Irish whiskey that I tried yesterday mm -hmm. was lighter than this. This is kind of more robust. Yeah. And they don't chill filter this. Yeah. And the fact that they don't adulterate it in any way, that it, this is really kind of very interesting. It's very, very different. It's a, it's a very unique flavor. Um, this smells a little funky, but it, it doesn't think, taste like it smells. I think that that's just because... Both of us are not used to Irish whiskey That's that much. possible, yeah. But, uh, no, it's a, it's a really nice drink. I mean, it's really, like I said, it's very unique. It's got that barley scent, and yeah. that's what we're not used to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. I, don't think, I don't think it's a negative, really. No. Whatsoever. No. All right, let's see what we've done with this one. Now, this one is a double-barreled, and by double barrel that means what, Don? Well, that means that, again, it was originally aged in an ex-bourbon barrel. Yeah. And then what they did for this one is they secondary aged it in used sherry cask from Spain. Okay, yeah. And basically they call it uh, Olorosa sherry. Yeah. And which is kind of a dry and fragrant. So it'll be interesting. And, and by the way, happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patty's Day, yes. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of bourbons have used the Oloroso Cherry Cass, um, I believe, um, what am I thinking? In the square bottle, I'm coming up blank now. Rabbit Hole, Rabbit Hole, I believe they have, there's just Cherry Cask. Yeah. Um, there's a few that have used Oloroso Cherry, so um, usually imparts a little sweetness to it. Right. So right now, this one's sweeter already. You it's sweeter. It's, you would not even know that they're the same product from, <laughs> from these two tastes to, for me. They're totally different. Totally different. I did not expect that. So this one, there's a lot of floral to it. Yeah. Uh, floral on the nose right away. It's sweeter than the other one, which is the sherry coming yeah. through. Uh-huh. Yeah. Wow. Sub. Wow. S so from what your research and what you looked into it, do they start with the same product? Um, I would think so. Uh, wow. Quite frankly, but very two very different processes mm -hmm. because um, I can't tell you that the mash bill is identical because I couldn't confirm that. Right. But the fact that this one goes into secondary Irish oak and this one goes into secondary sherry cask could mean all the difference in the world. Yeah, and it does. I'm telling you, they're different. Now, now that it's opened up a little bit, though, I, I get a little more of the malt coming through from that, from that first drink for me. Yeah, a lot of a lot of. Uh, so it's getting closer to what this tasted like. It, yeah. So yeah. Almost uh, current, a little bit of like dry raspberry. It, it's kind of dried fruit. Which the sherry? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so very interesting. So one thing I wanted to point out on the label is um, that's St. Kevin. And literally, uh, the distillery's name is Glendalock. Mm -hmm. And it was formed by five friends. And literally, the Glendalock area is where Kevin, St. Kevin, yeah. in the 6th century, got tired of being around people. Uh, kind of like me. I was just going to say this. Uh, I, I like this guy. And he basically went and kind of led a solitary life in nature and then created a monastery. And so St. Kevin has this 
real reverence in Ireland, and that's where they kind of base the fundamentals of this distillery route. Uh, it's a great story. Uh, you can go to their website and find a lot of this out. Uh, or it could crash your phone. Or it could crash your phone. But So the pot still was 86 proof. The sherry cask is 84 proof. Very okay. close. Yeah, very close. Yeah. Uh, but for St. Patrick's Day, either one of these would be a great drink. Sure, man. Try something new this year. Who wants to drink green beer, dude? When you could drink great Irish whiskey. That's right. And this is a gr these are both great Irish whiskeys, as far as I'm concerned. They're, um, I would definitely drink either of these. And I, if I had to pick one, I think I like this one a little better. Um, but and that, that's the pot still. Yeah. I, yeah, like, yeah, the, yeah. I like the pot still. Better the pot too. still had a little more flavor to it than 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 this one did. But it's it's amazing how different they are, with as far as we know, starting with the same mash bill and and the, you know just. The, the way it goes, but um, I, I I enjoyed both of them. They both were great. I thought this one had a little extra something to it. Well, um, good on them for not putting artificial color in yeah. it. Yeah. I, I think it's great. It, and by our standards, they're a little light, but they have flavor. Yeah. And uh, They have a ton of flavor. They have a lot of flavor for, but yeah. It reminded me I need to drink more Irish whiskey is what it reminded me. There of. you go. What's wrong with that? Yeah. No, nothing. Yes. So like I said, this St. Patty's Day, don't drink green beer, drink Glendalock. Here at Charlie's. We'll be here. Live band. It's going to be fun. Happy St. Patrick's Day, Happy everyone. Happy St. Patty's Day, everyone. We'll see you soon. Cheers. Cheers. What's new at Charlie's still on name? What's new at Charlie's? Tell me what's new at Charlie's still.